الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما اتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي دوشه بل respected brothers respected elders mothers and sisters listening at home inshallah ta'ala to continue from where we left off in the last session three men from the tribe of banu hanifa came to visit hazrat nabi kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam in madinatul munawwara in the year 9 hijri or 10 hijri and they were from the tribe of banu hanifa living in the area of yamama they came to hazrat nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam they greeted him and all three of them embraced islam <coughs> one of the three was musaylama the three were all leaders of their tribe but the most powerful of them was musaylama so he stayed with hazrat nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the city of madina and he saw the privilege that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam enjoyed the honor that the companions gave him <coughs> After a few days the three of them went back Musaylama was the main man there the two would listen to him and obey him like I said in the last session that he had this power this charisma when he would speak it would be like as if he was hypnotizing people and he had also a jinn that was inside him <laughs> Musaylama when he got back to yamama in his area he came up with this very ingenious plan and he said to the people that i have been to medina and i have met the prophet of the arabs muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i spoke to him and he spoke to me and at the end he said to me that musaylama al iyaz billah these are the words of musaylama which he fabricated and he said that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to me at the end that you have a share in prophethood and that you can be al-iyaz billah my partner in nabuwat that there is a place for you in the prophetic office an honor will be given to you and these people were blind they would listen to him he was a great politician and he made sure that none of the people of banu hanifa would go towards Madinatul Munawwara to meet the companions or to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that the truth would be revealed so this is what he said to the people and the people were amazed they knew that Musa alaihi salam was a great nabi and that the deputy of Musa alaihi salam was Harun alaihi salam so maybe on one side aliyazu billah 
he thought that if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can govern one part of Arabia then I can help him with the other part and he will have to compromise with me this is what he thought after a few months when he saw that as the days went by a lot of power came to him he gained strength by the day a lot of followers then he decided to write a letter to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an open letter in it he said min musaylama rasulillah ila muhammad rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aliyazu billah aliyazu billah he says that this letter is from Musaylama, the Prophet of Allah, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is also the Messenger of Allah. And he said very clearly that you can have one part of Arabia and I will have the other part of Arabia and I feel that this is the distribution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did not come up with anything new, he just wanted to fall onto the teachings of Islam but obviously in his own way so that power and position is with him exactly what Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani has done and you have the two types of Qadiani the Lahori Qadiani and those from Qadians and we won't go into that <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Madinatul Munawwara this was later on in the last stages the career, the messenger of Musaylama when he came. Now, anyone who was the messenger who would come to give uh, a, a, a specific message from a king or someone who was the leader of a tribe, then in Arabia they were protected. Immunity was given to them, protection was given to them, uh, nothing would happen to them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to that person who was uh, carrying the message and he said that if if it was not for the custom in Arabia that the messengers should be given full protection like the ambassadors, ambassadors are given protection I would have killed you with my own hands I would have killed you with my own hands that while Suzur alayhi salatu was salam is alive, this is what Aap sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith that Thalathuna dajjaloon, that at least 30 dajjal, kazaboon, imposters will come and <coughs> it will end at dajjal, nasihun dajjal, they will all claim the salat prophethood Aap sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read the letter and said to him go back and without doing anything to him, this man returned back to Yamama, to the tribe of Banu Hanifa. <coughs> Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wrote a letter as an answer to the letter of Musaylama, and he asked Hazrat Habib to give this letter to Musaylama, and in the letter. The letter was very, very simple. That is why in the Quran we, we see that the shortest letter ever uh, written to any king or queen was by Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. All he said that in the min Sulaiman wa in the whom is Milahi Rahman Ibrahim, Allah ta'alu alayhi wa atuni Muslimin. Simple. Don't try to fight me. Surrender to me, I am a Nabi, and come to me as a Muslim. That's it. Short and simple. Anbiya alayhimu salatu was salam. This is the miracle that Allah has given them. That when they speak, the message is clear, concise, few words, but the meaning speaks in volumes. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrote, Min Muhammad Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila musaylamat al kazab. Now this is where he got the name Musaylamatul Kazab And Kazab is the opposite of Siddiq Kazab is the one who is a great liar The biggest liar, great liar 
And in the Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the wrote uh, in the letter he wrote that uh, in al arda lillah yurifuha man yasha that this earth belongs to Allah and he can give power to anyone whom he wills in this dunya. So power can come to a Muslim or to a non Muslim, that is in the hands of Allah. This is the distribution of Allah. But Wal Aqibatulil Muttaqeen. But remember that the final win and victory, the final phase is for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this dunya, whatever you want to do, you can do, but remember that when you die, the final victory is for those who surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this messenger of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took this auspicious letter, went to the tribe of Banu Hanifa, Yamama, <coughs> And he met Musaylama, and Musaylama was there, and Sahabi Rasul was also there. And when he opened up the letter, the first thing he noticed was Min Muhammad Rasulillah ila Musaylamatil Kazab. And he was angry, he lost it. He was a Zalim, he was a Zalim. So the first thing he did was he said to the Messenger of Rasulullah, the one who came with the letters, he said that, what do you take me as? So the Sahabi said that, I take you as exactly what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes you as. So a team of people got hold of this Sahabi and they opened up his hands and he very slowly cut one of his fingers. And he says, I'm going to ask you again now, again for the second time. Who am I? And he says, you are Musaylamatul Kazab. And they cut the other finger. He asks the Sahabi the third time, the third finger is cut. The hands are amputated, the other hand is amputated. The limbs are cut off, the legs are cut off, until every part of that Sahabi is cut into pieces. Yes. These were the companions. On the, in the face of tyranny, they would say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Subhanallah al-Azim. Subhanallah al-Azim. What great companions they were. Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala an. What a great sahabiya. He said, every, every part of the body was cut into pieces, but he did not waver. He said exactly that whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said about you is the truth that you are Musaylamatul Kazab. And Musaylama did not honor the custom of the Arabs that they were protected, protection must be given to them, freedom must be given to them that they should go and return back with security. Anyway, <coughs> this Sahabi Rasul, the mother of this Sahabi was Umm Ammara. Umm Ammara was again a very powerful lady. She, in one of the battles, was shielding Huzur alayhi salatu was salam. We talk about women. Subhanallah. Look at the women of the companions. She was shielding Huzur alayhi salatu was salam. As in the companions would be there as bodyguards, but she was at a distance and she would see if anybody would come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she would go and fight them to block that person coming to Rasulullah, Umm Ammara. And this Sahabi Rasul was her son. So she vowed, she took an oath, that if any time, if there was any Muslim army to march towards your mama to fight Musaylama, she took a qasam that she will take revenge and qisas for the death of her son, and she will personally kill Musaylama. So this was an oath that she had taken. Subhanallah al-Azim. In the last session I mentioned that Iqrama uh, ibn bin Abi Jahl, he uh, launched an attack, but that attack was very premature. He thought that the soldiers of Musaylama, if he was to attack them whilst they are in that condition where they will not anticipate anyone coming to them for an attack. Victory will be for him, but that was his wrong judgment. 
So the Muslims were defeated. The second time, the second band of the army that came and attacked again, Musaylama's soldiers proved to be very powerful and that boosted the morale of the kafirin and the murtaddeen that were with Musaylama. And when this news reached Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and he was quite saddened and he said to Iqrima that Iqrima I don't wish you to return back to Medina I want you to go back and do jihad with the other tribes in Arabia who have become murtad who have apostated and, and this was the fitna of Ridda so he went towards the south where Umman is this is where Iqrima went now he appointed Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an. Allama ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi rahmatullah alayhi has said that to be a great leader there are a lot of uh, rules that apply and he said that if the Amir is someone who's soft-hearted then his deputy should be someone who's quite strong so in the case of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq he was soft hearted but his deputy Hazrat Umar Farooq was someone who was strong hearted and this is the key to success so you have the balance of both so you have the right team of shura you can't just have everyone who is hot tempered people or some people who are very cool not aggressive so in the case of Siddiq Akbar he did the right decision. He had Hazrat Umar Farooq and when it came to leading the armies, his deputy was Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. And in the case of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, because he was the most perfect man, he was full of moderation. He was full of moderation. So Allah gave him on his right, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq who was soft and on his left Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Hazrat Umar Farooq who was a shidda al kuffar who was a bit strong so this was a perfect team Huzur alayhi salatu was salam a perfect man full of moderation in the case of Hazrat Abu Bakr soft Hazrat Umar Farooq was strong and in the army Hazrat Khalid bin Walid Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was all prepared Hazrat Khalid bin Walid came with his sword and as I mentioned that Every time he went forward, he would always have his special cap, topi, kalansua that he would wear. And on the inside part of that topi, kalansua, he would have one auspicious hair of Huzur alayhi salatu was salam that was given to him. And he says it is the baraka, baraka of one hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Khalid bin Walid has never been defeated. Masha. So the Muslims were very confident now, though twice they tried to break Musaylama and his forces. Now Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and is all prepared and Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq clearly instructed him and Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq though a soft man but when it came to Ridda, anyone who apostated Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq was very very strong in his view and he said make sure anybody who becomes a murtad execute him straight away unless he testifies to the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah otherwise you execute him this was the message given to Khalid Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an Hazrat Amir Muawiyah was in this uh, army also this uh, group of companions that marched and in total there were only 15,000 Hazrat Abdul Rahman was also there son of Hazrat Abu Bakr Hazrat Abdullah was there son of Hazrat Umar all the great companions were there 15,000 people marched towards Yamama and whilst getting there there were skirmishes, fights when they met different people from Banu Hanifa they tried to stop the Muslims but Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was a powerful man and he would execute anybody who stopped the Muslims from going to their destination as I mentioned in the last session he took one hostage whose name was Majja, whose name was Majja, one hostage that was taken by Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an. Now when Hazrat Khalid bin Walid marched towards uh, Yamama, he was stopped at the valley of Aqraba and this was an open area where Hazrat Khalid bin Walid from a distance saw this huge strong 
powerful army of Musaylamatul Kazab of 40,000 people were in front of him and he and he had a group of how many? 15,000 and the problem dilemma with this uh, group of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was that you had the Muhajireen and Ansar but you also had the other tribes that were new Muslims the nomads, the Bedouins and they were not used to this style of fighting Muhajireen had a lot of experience, the Ansar also were new to this so there was this disadvantage to the companions and they were fighting those who were strong and they had all the arms and all the weapons in them, 40,000 so the Muslims formed their lines and the Kuffar were also there Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala and taking mashwira from the people and they decided that the nomads should be put in the front line the people of the tribe because this was their choice this is what they said that we want to be in the front to fight the the first people, the first group and then the Muhajirin and the Ansar who were experienced and warriors that they should command from behind so this was the mashwira of the Khalid bin Walid listened to them and he says fine this is how we want to do and when the battle started it is said that Musaylamatul Kazab's forces were so strong and mighty just the first wave broke the Muslim line and the Muslims were pushed all the way back all the companions and Musaylamatul Kazab came with this new strategy of fighting he came forward in waves in waves this was something new the nomads and the Bedouins didn't know how to fight and how to cope with this so everything broke up that unity that that wall of the Muslim just broke and crumbled and Muslims had to go back retreated all the way back and they would fight in waves the first batch would crush the front section and then they would go back and then the second section was already prepared and the third section it was like just bulldozing everything in the front Muslims were just dispersed and they did not know Muslims regrouped again and the Khalid bin Walid got all the companions together Muhajireen were there, the Ansar came on one side the nomads came, the Bedouins came and Muhajireen were very very strong people and they said that it is the tribal people here that the nomads that when they came back we had to come back now we are very far back so we have really lost the first day's battle so we have to come up with a new strategy and the Khalid bin Walid sat the Kuffar were just in front some of the Muslims were blocking them quick mashwira was done and the Khalid bin Walid decided that he will put each of the tribes on towards the different sections of the, the force of Musaylama so you had Muhajireen on one side, the Ansar on the other side and the tribes on the other side and each of them were given their banner to fight so for the Muhajireen the Amir was Hazrat Salim radiallahu ta'ala look at the justice of Islam Hazrat Salim was a slave Hazrat Salim was a slave, Mawla he was a slave and now he is the Amir and he said that I know why you make me Amir you make me Amir because of the knowledge of Quran that I have he was a great man, he knew a lot of Quran, he knew Tafsir so he became the Amir and for the Ansar Hazrat uh, uh, Sabit bin Qais radiallahu ta'ala an was appointed as Amir and the Bedouins, the nomads, different different people took on their banners and each of them they said to Khalid bin Walid we will be in the front the other group will be there, the other group will be there they came in waves to attack the Muslimin as Khalid bin Walid said fine let us apply this strategy how brave were the soldiers subhanallah the companion the, the Ansari Sahabi, the Amir as the Sabit bin Qais what he did was he he dug a hole knee high he dug a hole knee high and he put himself into that hole and he said to the Ansari companions that I have dug a hole so no one can push me back so no one can push me back I am going to stay here no matter what and he's the Amir and he put himself into that hole with his sword 
And he said, I want all of you Ansari people to gather up and to group. And he was there with the, with the legs halfway down in the hole. And this is how he fighted. SubhanAllah, what a fight he put up. But it was extremely difficult again for the Muslims to break that, uh, that wall of Musaylamatul Kazzab. And Khalid bin Walid was someone who was extremely experienced. And he knew, he quickly took with him Hazrat Abdul Rahman who was a great archer. And the brother of Hazrat Umar Farooq whose name was Zaid bin Khattab. Zaid bin Khattab was a powerful man. And he whispered in the ears and they knew. Now, second and third in command to Musaylamatul Kazab's army was Rajjal and al muhaqqam Rajjal was a powerful man. Rajjal was there, as a Khalid bin Walid knew that if we take out their ace warriors, that is going to weaken them. So an assignment was given to, again, the, the brave companions who had a lot of experience. So Zaid bin Khattab took his sword out and his target was uh, Rajjal. When he saw Rajjal, Hazrat Zaid bin Khattab, the brother of Hazrat Umar, Umar Khattab, ran towards him and he killed Rajjal. When they saw that Rajjal died, this was second in command. Then that group got very weak. After that, who took command was al muhaqqam Muhaqqam was someone who was very a powerful speaker. So he would speak whilst in the war to boost the morale of the soldiers. And while giving a lecture, Hazrat Abdul Rahman was, a, was, a, was an archer and a great archer. It is said that Hazrat Umar Farooq targeted al muhaqqam whilst giving a speech and the, the spear got cut him straight on the throat whilst giving the lecture and he fell down. So now two of the main people of Musaylama are down. So you have Al-Muhaqqam gone and you have also Rajjal who died. Now, subhanAllah, the Muslims knew that Musaylama was in the middle and thousands of people were just protecting him. It was like a hurricane. Just things, people were just revolving around him. This was just an incredible battle for the Muslimin. Something completely different. Not the conventional way in the battle of Wuhud in, and in the battle of Badr. This was something new. And this was a circle just like a hurricane or, or a tornado. And, and Musaylama was like the eye of the storm. So Khalid bin Walid knew that the only way to weaken Musaylamatul Kazab's force of 40,000 is to get to Musaylamah. They've taken out Rajjal and they've taken out al muhaqqam Now it is Musaylamah. But Musaylamah was right in the middle and all the people were in front of him. Every time the Sahabi went in front, it is said there were so many swords that the Sahabi would become Shaheed straight away. So now how is it that they can break this wall? Again, in the war, in the battle, Mashwara was done by Hazrat Khalid bin Walid with his elite uh, warriors and companions. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid said that I will personally try to cut through this wall and get Musaylama. SubhanAllah, Allah. what a warrior he was. He could have given this uh, to anyone. That now, this is your duty, this is your assignment. You have to target Musaylama, but he said, no, I will do it. It is said that Hazrat Khalid bin Walid with a few people went straight through. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid without looking, he just went straight through. He knew this is where Musaylama was. And he would just cut the people that were there straight through, like cutting a, a loaf of bread. Just not sure. All down. At the whole, the wall was broken. They just dispersed and they saw Musaylama. When Hazrat Khalid bin Walid saw Musaylama and the Muslims now enter through that wall, had broken that, that wall, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid ran after Musaylama. Musaylama did not know what to do and he ran, ran back and his forces also retreated and they went back. Muslims chased 
Musaylama until Musaylama with his army entered into this ranch, a garden which was fortified. And as his army went into this garden or a ranch, what they did is that they locked up the door. So now the Muslims are outside and Musaylama's army is inside. In the history books of Islam, this garden is known as the Garden of Death. The Garden of Death. Hadiqatul Maut. Hadiqatul Garden of Death. Now, everything was shut on the Muslimin. The Khalid bin Walid was there thinking that how can we go inside. The, the gates were completely sealed and locked and Musaylama was inside. Now comes one grand Sahabi whose name was Hazrat Barra. In the last session I said Barra, I said there is one Sahabi, I can't recall his name, but his name is Hazrat Barra. If you remember the one who starts to shiver. And he was so powerful that Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, or was it Hazrat Umar Farooq, once said about Hazrat Barra that look, if you take Barra with you, make sure you don't appoint him as an Amir because he is such a person he fears none but Allah wherever he will go anyone around him will just perish so the companions knew that he is a soldier but he cannot become an Amir his, his job is just to go and clean everything that is there now the gates were closed as at Barra bin Malik, the brother of Hazrat Anas. Barra bin Malik says that, O oh Khalid, what is the problem? You want the gate to open? Why don't you throw me over the gate? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you throw me yeah. over the gate? Companions first, they wanted to ignore him that 40,000 Musaylamas, troops, powerful people, and you want us to throw you over the gate and he says, throw me over the gate, so I can open the gate for you. And this is how he would speak. A man full of Iman. SubhanAllah. The strength of Hazrat Ali, remember? He broke the whole door with, his, with a single blow. So they were powerful people. And nevertheless, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid thinking, what can we do? And then he said to Barra, Barra, are you sure? And he looked at the face of Barra and knew that this was <coughs> perhaps the end of Hazrat eh? Barra, if he can open the gate, he can open the gate. If he can't, he can't. <coughs> there are <coughs> two narrations. It is said that the first narration is that some of the companions just picked him up and threw him. Mm-hmm. And the other narration is that they, they had a shield and they said to him that, right, stand on the shield and whilst we lift you up. Hazrat Barra took his sword and <coughs> as he was lifted up, he was about to jump. When he was about to jump, he saw the sword pointed at him. <laughs> All the sword, and he went back. And he was reluctant for a minute. And he said to Al Khalid bin Walid, he said that it is full of soldiers of Musaylama. And it is packed of people there. And then he looked at the faces of the Muslimin and he took the name of Allahu Akbar and he just jumped. Subhanallah al-Azim. What courage, what power. And Subhanallah, when he jumped on the other side, he had such power, my respected brothers, that he managed to push that entire group of Musaylama that was close to the gate and push them back. And he received more than 80 injuries, but he succeeded in opening the gate one man. Subhanallah. One man, Sahabi Rasul, and subhanAllah, he was injured on one side, 80 injuries. But he opened up the gate, and now when the gate was open, all the Muslims entered. 15,000 in total, and they were 40,000. Now, as the Muslims entered through the gate, Musaylamatul Kazab's force went back, and it was all fortified, everything was sealed, they could not run. And now, Muslims had shut the gates. It was the time that now you fight till death. Now you fight till death. The gates were shut. This is why this garden is known as the garden of death. Hadikatul Maut. 
it is said that this was one of the bloodiest wars in the history of Islam. And the Muslims fought and fought, alhamdulillah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the Muslimin. Musaylamatul Kazzab, when he saw that his forces were just dying in front of him, the jinn returned in him, the jinn that was inside him. It is said when the jinn would come back in him, the, it was like a form that came out from his mouth. And that his eyes would just start to spin round. And this was the jinn. So the jinn took effect and it is said that he went and he smashed himself into the wall that was there. Now, so many people, all the companions want to take Musaylama out. If you recall Hazrat Vahshi, Hazrat Vahshi was that Sahabi who, when he was not a Muslim, he had assassinated Hazrat Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an. And to compensate for that, he had taken an oath that I will kill Musaylamatul Kazab because he assassinated the best man amongst the companions and he wanted to now get rid of Musaylama. But there were a lot of people after Musaylama. You had also Umme Ammara, the mother of that Sahabi there. And you also had Abu Dujjana, the, the hero of Badr. And you also had the son of that mother of Umme Ammar, Hazrat Abdullah, that was there. It is said that Hazrat Vahshi took his spear and threw it in the direction of Vahshi and it, the, the target was right, it hit him, but at the same time it is also said that another Sahabi Abu Dujjana also striked him with the sword. So that is how Musaylama came to an end when he came down. There were a lot of companions on top of him and there were still people fighting with the forces of the Muslimin and they knew what to do. What they did is that they cut off the head of Musaylama to Al-Kazab who had said that I am al Billah, the messenger, Rasul, and they cut off, cut off his ha- head and they lifted up his head and where the, the kuffar were, they threw the head of Musaylama to them. And when they saw that the head of Musaylama is in front of them, then all of them surrendered. This was the end of this great fight which is known in the history books as Hadiqatul Maut and Alhamdulillah victory was given to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an. So that from this event we can see Alhamdulillah how brave the companions were. It is even difficult to describe a lot of the events that had taken place but inshaAllah ta'ala if Allah wills my respected brothers we will continue uh, from uh, where we end today, what happens later on with Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala an. You still have the battle with Aswad Anasi and the other people who also claim to be messengers and prophets. Inshallah, just to conclude the session, uh, I did mention in the last session that there was a woman by the name of Sajjah who had uh, taken a share, aliyazu billah, with Musaylama to be a prophet. Uh, or a Nabiya. Uh, I have this article, somebody gave it to me um, that there is this Muslim lady in America born 39 years ago in India her name is Normani, moved to the United States with her family when she was four she worked as a journalist for over a decade and was working on a book exploring the history I won't mention what she was studying it is not right because we have a lot of young ones here and she is in America, she says, American Muslim journalist Asra Normani wants to shake up the Muslim faith. She wants to shake up the Muslim faith. Faith to allow women to take leadership roles as Imams and to end the extreme views. So we have extreme views by Molanas who said that all oh, women can't become Imam. So this is extremist and fundamentalist. So if Musabai gives an azan, she is fighting that a woman should also sit on the pulpit. And the first Juma had taken place in America where a woman for the first time sat on the member and she delivered her khutbah and the gathering was all mixed. You had men and women and she has written a book after performing Hajj 
standing alone in Makkah, standing alone in Makkah. She has campaigned for the right to pray in the same space as men. So that if you are praying Salah, she is saying that women should also stand close to men and perform Salah. And even for women to take jobs like Imams, actions that earned her rebukes from the top authority on Islamic law in Egypt. So the, these are the signs of Qiyamah, my respected brothers. Uh, Muslims are illiterate in a lot of ways. And we have this very modern thinking. And when we go far away from the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one can be corrupted. And this is where you end up. So it, it has taken place. So you have one first woman imam in the masjid. She might get a lot of audience. But this is again great fitna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mrs. Musaylam al Kazam. Mrs. Musaylam al Kazam. Musaylam was a zalim. But nevertheless, subhanallah, we see that a lot of the Muslim countries have been ruled by women for a long period of time. Isn't it shocking? Where you have scholars, where you have ulama, where Islam, the banner of Islam is there, but yet women have been rulers. Pakistan, Bangladesh, we won't talk about other countries, all the same, all the same. Even if there is a, 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 a man who is the ruler, a king or whoever he is, but still again they adopt the same system far away from the Sharia of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us the tawfiq to follow the sunnah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to have the deep love of the companions of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana Muhammadin nabiyya al-ummi wa ala alihi wa sallim taslima Allahumma taqabbal minna wa tub alayna innaka anta tawab al-rahim Allahumma inna rasuluka al-afwa wal-afiyyat fi dunya wal-akhirah wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khiri khalkihi Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa azwadihi wa zuriyatihi wa ahli bayti ajma'in birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin